guys, good morning. Happy Thursday, January 26th. Um, my name is Alicia, and if you are new here, this is the Fanciful Flamingo channel. If you are a returning friend, grab your coffee, grab a slice of cake if you want, and uh, settle in for some cross-stitch chit-chat. Thank you guys uh, for joining me today. It may be a bumpy ride. <laughs> I sat down three times to film this um, floss tube and three times I have realized that I forgot to bring in my iPad to my craft room to film. So you never know what can happen here today. Uh, word of warning, uh, you're gonna see me looking off to my side a little bit more today. I've put my notes up on my computer in a bigger font because these eyes are old. Uh, but in uh, an attempt to make this a little bit more streamlined, streamlined and not um, a hot mess express, I'm trying to take better notes for you guys. So with all that being said, let's get this started today. <clears throat> um, let's see. My weekly recap. So January's been rough. I talked about this last week uh, on my little family here. I don't know what the Villar Chows did, but apparently we did not set the new year off straight. Um, I got an eye infection last week, and while the doctor held me hostage, he gave me my flu shot and my shingles vaccine and felt a little rough. And then Sunday, my daughter started feeling not great, sore throat, headache. By Monday, we were pretty sure she had COVID. Uh, my son started feeling sick, sore throat, headache. Tuesday, we took him in, PCR, the rapid test, sure enough, lights went off, bling, 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 positive for COVID. My daughter has it, and she has asthma, so she has an underlying condition, but she has had the gamut, the fever, the headaches, the chills, um, really bad congestion. Most anything upper respiratory lands up settling in her lungs because of her asthma. So she is, she is fighting the battle. My son, for the most part, excuse me, I'm going to rub my, uh, um, except for like a little bit of a sore throat and a headache, pretty much presented asymptomatic and you can't keep that 12 year old down. So he has, um, you know, he's, he's, he's good, but we're quarantining. And then yesterday I started feeling not that great and I am diabetic and I do have an underlying condition. So sure enough, this morning, um, I'm in the throes of what I'm pretty sure when I take the test will be a positive COVID test. Uh, and as I look at myself, I, I'm cold, so I put a sweater on. Um, didn't feel like doing much this morning, and I look like one of I look like the mean headmistress in the movie Matilda, the old version with Danny DeVito uh, and his wife Rita Perlman. But I keep looking at myself, and I'm like, could I be any more mean headmistress looking today? So apologize for the stern appearance uh, today, but there was no brushing hair. My head hurts so bad. But enough of that. The other thing we did, and I did, if you follow me on Instagram, um, I am the dot fanciful flamingo on Instagram. And if you don't, I'd love to have you over there. But I did show pictures this weekend of the antique spool cabinet that I found at the antique store. Not the pretty shiny one, but the um, little rough around the edges like me one. Uh, that was really, really well priced. And when I got it, I really thought that it had been just made by someone's husband, um, you know, for their shop. It was rough looking. But as we got into it this weekend and stripped the paint off, you can start to see where the labels were etched in. And when I pulled the drawers completely out, it had the grooves for um, the wood sections for the spools. They're all gone, but we're going to cut some and replace them. And um, I opted with the, uh, vote of a lot of my friends on Facebook to leave her rough, to not, re I never wanted to repaint her and make her look new and shiny. 
um, because I like my stretch marks and wrinkles and my testament to the life I have lived. I wouldn't want to be made new and shiny. So I didn't want to make her, I didn't want to forget her past. And yes, she is a her and she has come to life for me and she is my new BFF in my craft room. And I will insert a picture um, of where she sits. So I'll be right back. So there she is and I just love her. Um, I did put some new knobs on her, but then I patinaed and aged the knobs. So that was another thing that my husband and I did this weekend. And then Sunday morning, the weather was nice. So we went to a local, what we call a swap shop. It's an outdoor flea market. Uh, and it's hit or miss. And this weekend was a miss. <laughs> but we can really only go from January to like March or April. And then it just gets too hot. But it was nice to be back out there. Um, don't know what I'm really looking for when I go antiquing. But I know when I find it. So... And then I had a, a nice lamp in my craft room that was pretty. And when I bought it, my husband said, you're not going to like it. It's not going to give you enough task lighting. And he was right. And I've told him he was right, so I can admit it on camera now. So I had a million alt lights plugged in. And still, this is not where I sit to stitch. I'd like to because I have beautiful windows for natural light as well. So he put up basically like a garage task light um and so this is the light that you're getting in here today and it is fabulous so that prompted an order for, off of wayfair of a new comfy chair that i can put over here i will take a picture when it comes in i had a little table that really just collected junk i had wanted it for my fabric cutting table but it's honestly too small for that so i'm always going back to the dining room table so that little corner will get redone. And I've also been um, working on just continuing to organize. Now I'm doing my fabrics on the comic book um, boards. So uh, that's been neat. So, cause I found a lot of fabric I forgot I had, but I've been doing sometimes one 15 minute stint, sometimes two a day and whatever I can get done in that time I do. And and we'll continue on. So that was a lot for this weekend, which meant I didn't stitch a lot and that's okay. Cause I have been stitching quite a bit <clears throat> with the shingle shot. And now this week with my kids being sick during the week, probably more than I usually do cause I am quarantining with them. So that was my weekly recap. That's a lot, I know. Uh, so thank you for sticking with me for that. I'm gonna look over here again. Prayers, um, Dina the Nightly Stitcher, I think it was two floss tubes ago, stated that she had been having eye trouble and kept going back to the doctor and feeling that her prescription was off. And um, she, they found that she has cataracts. So she is going to have some cataract surgery. Uh, she said at the end of the month. So here we are. So I'm sure quickly. So uh, I would ask you to pray that her surgery goes well. She is a quilter and a prolific cross-stitcher and of big pieces, and a dear friend. Um, and as you know, our eyes are everything when we cross-stitch, so let's pray for her. And then I had a new viewer and friend, because you guys know, if you are here, you are my friend, uh, who reached out. Uh, her birthday was this month, and it's bittersweet, because we all praise when we get to take another trip around the sun. But she is waiting on the results of... Um, some testing for breast cancer. Um, and so the diagnosis, the diagnoses are scary. The waiting is the worst. Uh, so let's keep her in our prayers as well. And I'm going to once again be selfish and ask you to pray for my children that um, they continue to recover with no incidences from COVID. Uh, and I'm gonna be a little selfish. I do not like to ask for prayers for myself, but I have had COVID in the past and again, underlying conditions make it a little bit more difficult for me to recover. So I'm gonna ask you to just, just say a little prayer for me and I would greatly appreciate that as well. Now, let's get into this. 
uh, I don't know if I like this turnip thing. Floss tubers. I am designating 2023 as the year of the floss tuber. We have so many new floss tubers this year, and I love it. And um, y'all know, silent applause and jazz hands. It's still morning. At least he doesn't like loud noises. Um, but fabulous for taking that leap, for doing it, for getting out there, for giving us more content to watch, uh, more enabling. So please keep them coming. I want to shout out some new floss tubers, which you guys have all already seen because I'm a little behind on it. But my dear, dear friend, Hannah Duffy, is Hannah the Stitch Fairy on Floss Tube, and she has her first one, and it is fabulous. Um, so congratulations, Hannah, on making your first floss tube. I love ya. My friend Jody Smith, Simply Stitching Ocala, has her second floss tube up already. And just this, both fabulous, but this last one was chock full of finishing goodness. She is a prolific stitcher as well and a finisher like me. We both like to um, stitch smaller pieces and FFO them and put them out uh, for us to enjoy. So that is uh, another new floss tuber. The New Hampshire Stitcher, I'm pretty sure has two as well. And she has just exploded on the scene. She is a younger floss. Well, Hannah is too. Hannah, we discovered yesterday that Hannah was born the year I was married so she could basically be my child and her three precious little angels could be my grandchildren. <coughs> Hurts to say that, except that I love Hannah. But the New Hampshire Stitcher is a newlywed. She has been stitching for a few years now. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pieces. Uh, a sampler stitcher, majority, and an enabler. I mean, I have finally succumbed to getting a, a notepad. I have this little notepad that I now keep beside me because I stitch right now on the love seat in my room and I watch Floss Tube on my TV and um, I'm starting to take notes. Also, I'm starting to take notes because Teresa, the garden goose stitcher, is um, only purchasing cross-stitch supplies once a month. And I'm gonna start doing that because it just, um, it makes you think. And I had said last year that my word for this year was purposeful. And I wanted to be purposeful in my cross-stitching, which then prompted stitch your stash. But, um, so writing them down and not impulsively ordering them like I always did really makes you think uh, and I have started, before I press add to cart, ask myself, where am I going to put it in my home or who am I going to gift it to? And not just buying to buy. So that has helped me as well with the add to cart. That's not to say that I still don't go on and add to cart because I do. Stitch your stash if we have said ad nauseum. Uh is not about not buying. It's just about maybe going to your stash and pulling some things from there instead of stitching the newest. Admittedly, market is in March. Designers have slowed down a little bit in preparation. So January and February are not as hard to show restraint on. Um, so we will see after March what, uh, what I'm saying then. Uh, but those are some new Floss tubers. I watched this morning uh, pastime pieces. They are Canadian. They have 12 videos, but I was uh, fortunate enough to meet one of them at the Annabella's All Things Winter Retreat. She came all the way down from Canada and she gave us all a little sweet gift as well at the retreat. But uh, I would check them out as well. Pastime pieces. And I'm going to put all the names across the bottom. Because if you're like me, you've already forgotten what I said two minutes ago, which I have. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to drink a little bit of my throat. And I'm going to try not to get off camera as much this week. Starbucks today, y'all, not Dunkin' Donuts. It was closer. So, last week I had shown you guys I had FO'd Be Mine, but I had not fully finished it. 
And so this week it is fully finished. It is a pillow with a rickrack. Um, and then Holly Jones, Mrs. Jones Stitches, in her last week video, had shown, and it was actually a project bag that her mother had made using a dish towel. And I, it just so happens that that day I was, um, I've also been kind of purging my home. I do that every January and try to take a weekly um, bundle to Goodwill. So I've had a stack of, I don't know about y'all. I don't know if it's a Southern thing, but it is not a holiday unless I switch out the dish towels uh, on my little oven handle. And every, I have a, I have for every season, but every year I go to Home Goods, TJ Maxx, wherever, and I see new dish towels that I have to have for that season. So I'm saying that I have this these this set of dish towels, and I was gonna donate them. And they were cute, but I saw this and I was like, you know what? It's a little bit thicker. I love it, and it would be perfect for some of my Valentines. So I did it. I cut it up, and uh, for my Primrose Cottage little pillows, it is great. So. This was probably 14 count Ada that I've been trying to use up. And 14 count Ada is great for these little pillows. It really is. So again, Be Mine Primrose Cottage, Rick Rack that I probably bought at Hobby Lobby. I have them in my jars here. And a dish towel I was gonna donate. And, and, um, and being completely honest, I watch Vonna Pfeiffer. I am a great, great fan of her finishing. And she cuts her rickrack instead of trying to get it to turn and then just lines up the edges. Game changer. Because if you've ever stitched the rickrack in, you know that it'll bubble. But I did do this on this little piece here. It didn't tuck. And so I'm going to have to fix that somehow. But I show you this to show you that it doesn't have to be perfect. To finish it. I mean, it's going to sit in my dough bowl. And my dough bowl has straw in it. So you're not going to see that anyway. But it's finished and I get to just show it. So I wanted to just be completely transparent with that. My cursed New Year stitch is FFO'd. Um, I had some velveteen and some chenille from Lady Dot Creates. So I finished it on the brown. And uh, oh, sorry, on the back with this. I think it's called Potato. Chenille by Lady Dot Creates. And this um, velveteen, I don't know what I'm saying. And the chenille is shallot by Lady Dot Creates. And um, Vonna Pfeiffer also had a tutorial on stitching the chenille in. I had used Aileen's glue on one at Christmas time and it worked great, but I really do like to stitch and I like to hand stitch. So I, again, um, did the Vonna Pfeiffer tutorial on stitching the chenille. And then she shows, I got a little mascara wand that was a gift uh, from another attendee at Annabella's. And then you just kind of fluff it back up. But there, my heart and hand uh, Valentine sampler is FFO'd and also ready for my dough bowl. So look at that. And then... I had FO'd last week, Oh Lucky Day, by Brenda Gervais. And then I did pull from my stash as I was organizing my fabrics. I had this green, I had this. I had ordered these little buttons from Primrose Cottage. So y'all know I usually don't um, do a lot on the back of mine, but I had this, so I did. And then the only reason it's not completely finished is I decided I wanted and I do like to put trim on my pillows. So once again, this week I went to Lady Dot Creates, and I'm not gonna take these out of the package. Um, and I ordered, and they came super quick. This is Mossy, and this is Lush Lawn. And so I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do the Pom Pom in Lush Lawn or in Mossy. Mossy probably fits better with the back um, but either of them would go with the front. So that is um, not completely fully finished, but getting there. And this is, was part of my haul this week, so I'll talk about that again. Um, and then the last FFO, because I try to do my pillows and things on Fridays. Fridays are my finishing Fridays. 
but I had started this little, and it's Little Snowman 1 by salt.pepper.stitching, Emily Call. When we did our um, SYS 2023 Zoom call last week, our first one of the year, Emily was our guest designer and it was a fabulous call. So I started stitching him on the call, um, finished him up this week and he is a two by two. They are teeny tiny. I had done Mr. and Mrs. Claus at Christmas time and they were on my tree. Um, so I finished him up this week. This is another tag from Chantel at 141 Design. So I just painted it a dark blue and then she shows um, how to distress. So I did take some sandpaper and just barely distress the edges a little bit, but just to take the paint off a little. Uh, this, I think I had bought this year for my snowman stitches because I just had never stitched snowman before, but I think this is probably from Joann's. It's just a dotted and probably when it was on sale. This little pom-pom fringe, I actually bought a roll of this, and I don't have it on my desk now, at TJ Maxx. It was a Martha Stewart. It came on a wooden spool. It was like $5. It's a ton of it. And I have probably had it for a few years. The button was another one from my pack that I had from Primrose Cottage. I had ordered for um, Snow Place Like Home and the Winter Retreat piece. And there was a ton of buttons in that package. This one had the little kind of hump on the back. So I just took some pliers and popped it off and I did glue this little snowflake on. And then I made it a tag like I did my Valentine's one. These were beads that I had bustle bought on Amazon. Um, so I used the beads, threaded it with some twine and my red beads came with a needle to thread to make it easier. And then I used to make tassels like this. I said it last week, I think, all the time for my tear trays. So when I have scraps of fabric, I go ahead and cut it. I cut them into 18 inch strips and they're a ruler wide. So I just use one of my little quilt um, rulers and then I take my Ginger pinking shears and zigzag the edges. And so all of this is from Stash that I had. And you know, it yes, it's time consuming, but it's also nice to just dig into a container and find scraps that are already cut up. What I do to um, attach this is I will fold them over and I put my thumb in between and I will do a tutorial and post it. And then I take a zip tie, and I bought the zip ties off Amazon, and I will pull the zip tie tight to make this. And then you can take ribbon, this time I took twine, and then just cover the zip tie. And you can see it there a little bit. I'm actually gonna put a snowflake right here. And so I did this for my tear trays, for my snowmen. And it's just a different way to finish. Um, I started doing things like this for the tear tray when I couldn't find pieces that I wanted. And on that note, I wanted to show you, I have been now back to stitching um, exclusively for exactly a year. And the first thing that I cross stitched when I came back last year were these mittens. And these mittens were a free chart from Country Living Magazine. Since the pandemic, uh, every month when I would get my Country Living Magazine, they have a pattern. They have the picture of the pattern. And you just go to countryliving.com and you can print out these patterns. And so that's what I started doing last year and I have a whole bunch of them. Uh, and this was the first one I did because I wanted something between Christmas and Valentine's for my tear tray. And I just put them on the little easel and I finished them on a hoop because I didn't know what else to do. And then I had been down the TikTok rabbit hole of watching embroidery TikToks and she hot glued hers. I don't do that anymore, but I just, and I had a ton of felt from felting. So it's a very simple finish. I think I am going to put some rickrack on it now. Uh, maybe put some snowflakes or something on it, but this was free. And it's so funny when I look back at this because 
my husband was so encouraging because the patterns were free. So I would even send them, email him to work and he would print them off. And then we, I would go to Hobby Lobby, buy some Ada, buy whatever the call for um, DMCs were. So for a couple bucks, I would have cross stitch. And he was like, this is the least expensive hobby you've ever had. You should keep going. <laughs> it just cracked me up for real. So here we are a year later from this little free pattern. So, um, and there's lots of free patterns out there. Designers are so generous uh, with their talents and their time. So um, I feel like cross stitch is for all budgets because we certainly can stitch on 14 count Ada from Michaels and Hobby Lobby and Joann's and DMC. And it is joyful and joyous. You do not have to get silks and over dyes and linen. Um, and you don't have to buy expense. Not, I don't find patterns expensive unless you're like me and have like a second coming moment every time you walk into an LNS. But there are enough free patterns out there to keep you stitching for a lifetime and beautiful ones from simple to intricate. I mean, I've even found free samplers. So I do feel like that this hobby and this community is for everyone. So that's a lot to say. That's almost like my chit chat in the FFO. What do I have on FOs? Oh, I do. I had said that one of my plans for this year was to do six Prairie Schooler Santas for my tree. Last year I did three or four. Um, I wanted to start back at 1996, which was the year that we got married and then move forward. I had good intentions of starting them for the 12 days of Christmas, but I didn't, I didn't get 12 stitches started. I had started him, which is the 1996, and I had his code and his hat outlined. Um, and so instead of doing the 25th this month, I decided to do the 24th and 25th. And quite honestly, they're not difficult stitches, but it's a lot of fill-in, and this is not a day stitch. This is a two or three day stitch. If you will notice, there is a mistake because I filled him in in my 12 days and then filled the green in and forgot to go back and do these. And I, they're gonna start cutting my lawn, so you're gonna hear them. Got so excited, I went and did the boots. So these three rows are not in mine. Uh, but it didn't affect it at all. This worked out fine. The stars worked out fine. He's just missing his little bottom to his coat. But he is a finish. And I've got my first Prairie Schooler or ornament done for this year. Um, I've already got the 2004, which was Emily's birth year, uh, outlined from Christmas. But next month, I'm going to do my Wee Santa from Heart and Hand. My plan had been to do six Prairie Schoolers and six Wee Santas this year. So that will be next month's stitch. And I'm not gonna fully finish him now. I'm gonna put him with my Halloween stuff. I have a box for my finishes. And when I get them done, or maybe a little, little later on in the year, I do know how I'll finish these because I have the ticking fabrics that I want to use for, him, for them. But um, I don't have to finish him right now. I did want to go back, and I'm sorry I'm flipping back and forth and show y'all my cross-stitch project planner pages that I'm using like a scrapbook. And here's the picture that I took with my sprocket of the fully finished snowman. And I make notes on how, when I started him, how I finished him, what I used, but it's nice to have the picture. And also, um, when I do, there's a snowman too that I'm going to put on the back side of that. Um, I can see. And then I took a picture now of that prairie schooler so I could have it. And when I fully finish it, I'll add to this one a second picture of how it's fully finished. But I then now will take them out of this um, because I keep them in these page protectors in the project bag um, while I'm stitching it. And I don't want them to get them all crinkled. And then when I'm done, I put them in my planner. And my planner's becoming sort of like a scrapbook as well. Sorry, this is fallen, so that's not gonna hold there. Hot Mess Express. 
The whip, the only whip that I worked on is my Clara Hansen sampler by Hello by Liz Matthews. And I have been doing a thread, sometimes two threads a day. So I did put, I had decided the last time that I was gonna put Villar Chow here, and this was kinda gonna be our wedding sampler because my son was too manly to have swans on his. So I have put in the year and um, I'm going to chart out, I'm going to find an alphabet. I have a book of alphabets and borders. I'm going to find an alphabet to chart our name. And then I came down here and started on the swan. And I, I love samplers because I love stitching motifs. And though that swan is just so gorgeous. So I'm going to flip this over to show y'all. This is what the sampler looks like. So I am here, I've done this one. So I've got this and I've got this border and then our name. But I am just doing this when I need a break or at the end of the night before I go to bed. I just put one or two threads in. This idea was uh, given to me by Jessica, the Sweetwater Stitcher on one of her latest floss tubes. Uh, and it's, it's working really well. I have been doing it also with my daughter's sampler that I started for her birthday, the green one, uh, something of St. Knives. But I've decided that I'm gonna work on hers exclusively on the 8th of the month, which is her birthday date. Um, and give myself the, I mean, it's not a big one, but give myself the year, it's her birthday sampler. So my goal will be to finish that one by her next birthday. So I have not worked on that one this week. And then last night, I usually do these at the beginning of the month and I have been, I did not on this one. Uh, the retreat kind of threw my schedule off in a good way. So I have been doing the joyful journals. I started in July. I have kept up with each of the months on the joyful journals. So I started this last night and I will finish it today. This is really a day stitch, two or three hours. Um, and then I'm not sure how I'm gonna finish it. I may go, well, I won't go. I may look on Michael's or Target's site uh, and see if they have any little finishing pieces for this one. So that was my start last night. <clears throat> my husband has been out of town and he decided to get a plane and come back, but he was getting back late last night. So I was trying to wait on him. So I was stitching. So those are my FFOs, FFOs, uh, whips and starts for this week. I've been busy. I love to stitch. It is therapy for me. I am also, I realize, a stay-at-home mom. Uh, so I, I have a little bit more time than a lot of people to stitch. Uh, around 7 o'clock at night after dinner, my husband usually goes and watches TV and then naps because he gets up extremely early every morning. And then my kids go off to their rooms to do homework or get online with their friends or play their video games. So from probably 7 to 10 or 7 to 11, I sit and stitch every night. So that's a good chunk of time. So, um, and that's just, it's therapy for me. So let's see. My monthly recaps, since it's the end of January, I wanted to see kind of where I had done, and I hadn't finished it, but I had nine, nine finishes, nine FOs. So I stitched nine things this month, and I fully finished seven of them. Um, so that's not too bad. They're minis, they're, no, they're, not, they're smalls, they're pillows. Um, I did finish uh, Maker and Mender, and shoot, hold on one second. No, that's okay. I'll bring it next week. Um, I did finish Maker and Mender. I stitched on it monogamously for three days uh, last week to get it done because I self-imposed to only do one sow at a time this year. Because last year I got sow happy. It's kind of like add to cart happy. And Maker and Mender was a sow from the Tipsy Bunnies and also for Becca Samry Stitch's birthday. Uh, so that was going to be my January sow. Holly, Mrs. Jones Stitches, <clears throat> and Jessica, excuse me, Sweetwater Stitcher, are co-hosting a tiny town, the Valentine's Stitch, um, big hearted, hashtag big hearted sow. 
They started that at the retreat and I'd been wanting to do it, but I was not going it myself. Again, no rules, but mine. Uh, start it until I finish Maker and Mender. So I'm gonna start that today. And then Chantel 141 Design has made this beautiful stand for Hands-On Design's new releases, the Mad and Plaid releases. And she is starting a sale in February and it's a five week sale. She has broken it out into weeks and I'm going to put the schedule here for you. So if you would, if you would like to join in on the um, Mad for Plaid sale with uh, Chantel 141 Design, she does have the pattern on her site. It is stitched with Cosmo Floss, which I have been wanting to try for a long time. <clears throat> it's hard to find. Kimberly Jolly Fat Quarter Shop had the entire set for sale on her site and it sold out instantly. Like the entire Cosmo one. So, um, but it also has a um, DMC conversion. I am going to attempt to try to find the Cosmo um, Flosses. I think, and I don't want to speak out of turn, that Chantel is going to try to um, do some thread packs, but she is also having some difficulty getting all the colors in. So I don't know how many packs she will have. I will try to be online first thing when she announces it to get a pack, but I have ordered the pattern and I have ordered the stand that I want to, that she has in her shop to finish them on um, so that I can just switch them out. And there's gonna be, I think Kathy said in her latest floss tube, that there are going to be more than just the four seasons in um, in the Mad for Plaid series. So I'll just be able to switch them out on that stand, put the magnet behind it and the washer and just switch them out. And I love that. Um, getting a lot of bang for the buck there. So those are some of my plans. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna start the Tiny Town and then I do have the shelf sitter for Tiny Town. I watched Chantel's live the other night when she showed us how to paint it and almost do like a linen, a linen paint on it. I went out and bought the spray paint, which is a lot easier than brush painting all the little pieces. So it is outside dry and out in the garage drying. So I will have that ready for my tiny town switch outs. So those are plans for right now. I am starting, um, I have a little, another little of the scrapbook boxes that um, I put in patterns that I think I'd like to stitch for the next month. So already I've got my joyful journal for next month in it. I've got another Valentine's stitch, a St. Patrick's Day stitch for my days, uh, my wee Santa. And I will actually show that next week on my floss too because we'll be at the beginning of February. So I'll go over all those plans with you. Let's see, what else do I have? Y'all want to do haul? I don't have a lot, in fact, Pattern-wise, and I'm sorry I didn't take this out. This is all I've bought, and I got this from Annabella's. She showed it, and I had to have it. You know I love Prairie Schoolers. All of my Prairie Schoolers are um, the yearly Santas, and they're red coats. So when I saw this one, and all the Santas had different coats on, yes, please. And I think, I think Helen D., um, has done some of these and finished them. So I'll fold this up and you can make them stand, stand ups. And I've never done that, but I'm gonna try. Um, I know she has stand up Santas. I just don't know if it, prairie schooler Santas. I don't know if it's these, but tell me six, seven, eight, that these would not look fabulous as stand ups. Just fabulous. Um, I, if you really want to learn about fully finishing, Helen D and Vonna Pfeiffer, hands down, go to for, um, and Priscilla, Priscilla from Stitching with the Housewives. Uh, I keep reaching down here because my computer times out. Um, I highly recommend Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, Helen D, and that's Helen D, like her last initial, and then Stitching with the Housewives for really getting um, 
good tutorials and ideas on finishing. So that was my pattern haul. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I know. Because one of the reasons I also wanted to stitch my stash this year was, um, sorry, I just got a notification that Primrose Cottage is live. So, um, I wanted to focus more on buying fabrics and flosses that I wanted to try and finishing. So I wanted to put more of the money I was spending towards that because I do have, and I think I said last week, over 200 patterns that I had bought last year. I can't stitch one a day, so I have plenty. Not that I'm not gonna be buying. I didn't say that once again, and market's coming and new releases but I've got a good solid two months to only stitch my stash. So a lot of my haul this week, or the bulk of it, has had to do with things other than patterns. The first thing I got was this beautiful project bag from Holly, Mrs. <laughs> Jones Stitch's mother, Jill Weston. And she and Holly post these once a month on Instagram, and they did last Friday night. I was refreshing and watching, and I said, me please, to everything, just hoping to get something. So I got this project bag, and y'all know, I am a devout Como Stitches project bag, um, really exclusively shopper. But Holly had these at retreat, and I just love them, and I love this handle. And Jessica at the retreat, and a couple other people had these and Carrie Tiger Lily shows them um, these new like project binders. And your pattern can fit in here. Your flosses, your scissors, your needles. And this is really great to take to retreats because you can take a whole bunch of them. I'm gonna be buying more next month. You better believe I'll be back on there. Me please, me please, me please. And then you just tuck them in here. And then you just take this to the retreat. Or when you're stitching with your friends or when you go to your local needle workshop. Yes, please. So I got these out last Friday and they were already here this week. Like by Monday or Tuesday, it's crazy. My friend Allison Norris and Allison, if you're watching today, hey, I miss you. Allison is uh, the retreat whisperer. She likes, she goes to quite a few retreats. She is an expert. Um, at all things retreat wise. So when she was at Annabella's, she had this book and Teresa, the garden goose showed it last week as well. Her friend Tammy had bought it for her and it's my stitching friends. And, um, so you go to retreats and, and you just pass it around and people at the retreats fill in. The information and you can keep up with your stitchy friends and you know that just goes right along with we are not alone so I had meant to order this when I got back forgot Teresa showed it last week and this was one of those immediately add to cart from Amazon and I think this was like maybe ten dollars so even if you don't go to retreats if you go to your LNS and stitch or stitchy groups or if you're Stitching on a Zoom call. You can message people that you want, maybe in your state or like in our Stitch Our Stash group, we've already got people reaching out and hooking up and connecting um, and making stitchy friends. Fill it out, fill it out. Um, the other thing I got was, oh, this is the sale that I'm starting in March. Denise Waters, Niece Stitches, was at the retreat, and she is starting a stitcher, st uh, stitcher stash, stitch along for the Primrose Cottage Beehive rules. Uh, and it started at the retreat, but it's open to everyone. There is a Facebook group, and I will put the name along the bottom. I don't remember it. So, uh, Victoria Clayton did a silk conversion for the threads. I haven't even opened it yet. And I have been wanting to, I am an Ada stitcher. I don't care. I can use silk on my Ada. So I bought the silk conversion from Victoria Clayton. Uh, and also immediately 
came. Ordered it, was already shipping out the next day. So I have that to start beehive rolls in March. Um, didn't know what I was gonna stitch it on. Been talking to Holly, um, texting a lot. And I think that she is one of those, she just has a talent for fabric and for floss conversions, color and cotton. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to stitch the beehive on. Some people are doing it on almost like a honeycomb or chicken wire that I think is from Fabric Flare. But she told me that, like me, she doesn't like to stitch on bright white unless I'm doing a small pillow. And that her favorite white is um, vintage smoky white. Now, this is Cashel linen. It's a 28 count. And I do like the, the Cashel linen on these bigger counts. So I bought a quarter of a yard. Um, and this came from 123 Stitch. They had it and it came in. So this is what I'm gonna do, beehive rolls. So I've already got it kitted up. I've got my linen, I've got my linen that I want to put back in the bag. I've got my silks and I've got the pattern. So there you go. And I'm sorry for the crinkling, but I like to keep these. And then they did have back in stock 18 count vintage country mocha. And y'all know, I'll buy vintage country mocha in any count when I can get it. I am a faithful follower of vintage country mocha, so I picked that up. And look, other times I've been on 123 Stitch, I'm like, well, if I'm gonna pay for shipping, I might as well get more. And I was like, no, no, that's not the point. I need some fabric for some things that I want to do. And that is all I'm gonna buy. And I did. And then, Be Stitch Me, I'm in their fabric club, their monthly fabric club, but the, she had, um, sorry for the crinkling. She had on her site one day some extras and this was Portabella, Lugana, 28 count. Um, and I bought it because I am not one to stitch a lot on very mottled colored fabric, but I, I see other people do it and I love it. Uh, so this is Portabella. I don't know what I'm going to stitch on it. And if you guys have any ideas for me, please feel free, uh, to message me. But having said that, this is why for me, I really wanted to stitch my stash because I needed to venture out. I wanted to challenge myself to work on higher counts. I would love to stitch. I've said I will max out on 32 count linen, but I'm trying, I'm still trying. Um, not because I don't like Ada. And if I never stitched on anything but Ada, I'd be fine. But I just wanted to challenge myself and learn. And honestly, Contented Needle Worker, Kim, is really the one that inspired me to work on a higher count because her pieces are so beautiful. And there's things that she has worked on that I would like to work on. Um, and again, if I can only work on Ada, I will. But if I can work on a little bit higher count, <laughs> I will do that as well. And then the other two things I bought were my trims from Lady Dot Creates. And last year I had bought a lot of velveteen from her because I do like the velveteen for the backs of pillows. Uh, and this year I want to buy more of her trim work. You can't get, I don't know where she gets this. I don't know what little mice she has working in her workshop that create the chenilles and the polka dots. Um, and the pom-pom polka dots, the pom-pom fringes. Um, but those little mice are so talented. So those are things that I would like to move my budget towards uh, this year and step up my finishing games. So we've got that, let's see. I've talked about my plans already. Got them out of order. So I don't really have a chit chat this week. I will say that um, I am very grateful for everyone who reached out after my floss tube last week, a little emotional. My nose is running, and y'all are gonna excuse me a minute. Um, about people being lonely, 
and feeling alone. And I had quite a few new friends reach out to me to say that they didn't know anybody or they had health issues that um, prohibited them from really going to stitch out in public or going to retreats. I had several people on uh, the Stitch Your Stash group put it out there and start groups. And Jessica and I are gonna try next week, I think Tuesday was the consensus in the morning, to just open up a Zoom. I will announce it probably that day. My schedule is one with my kids that I just, I can't plan too far ahead on the Zooms because like this week we were sick, things come up with school, um, appointments and things. So knock on pressed wood uh, or laminate that next Tuesday morning in our Stitcher Stash group, and you do have to be a member of that group, we learned last week with the Zoom call that our pro account is limited to 100 participants. So several people were not allowed to make it in to uh, the Emily Call designer uh, interview and kind of stitch, stitch with, and we are sorry for that. I would ask everyone and remind everyone to be gracious and grateful when things don't go according to plan. We knew this was the first one. We knew there would be hiccups. Um, and the, the one hiccup was that it taps out at 100 people. So some people were not able to get in. And so let's always treat every hiccup with some graciousness and gratefulness um, if we can. You know, you do catch more flies with honey. And that's gonna be my little chat for today. Um, we did get on a call Friday morning, first thing, called Zoom, trying to figure out if we could add, what we could do to add um, more. But from Zoom Pro to Zoom Business is a huge leap. And we could add, but you have to then add licenses. And the licenses are what get expensive. And Jessica and I pay for our pro membership. And we do that willingly because we are committed to bringing this community together. Um, so we don't ask for anything in return. We don't want anything in return. What we get is that sense of community. Um, so, but to add would either be, we could do it to 300 for $50 a month, every month, or we could go to the first business plan, which is 10 licenses, 500 people. It is $20,000 for the year. I like y'all, but not that much. I'm just gonna be honest. Mm -hmm. Mama gotta eat and buy. <laughs> so we are still working on ideas to figure this out. Um, Logistically, we just can't do two a month because, again, we have families, the designers um, have things going on. Um, I do want to now circle back on a high note. Emily Call, salt and pepper stitching. I've been a fangirl of hers forever. Um, and she was our first designer. She was fabulous. We... Um, as people were getting in the Zoom room, I opened it up with the mic on so everybody could talk because at first I had the mic off and it's really weird to stare at each other in silence before the meeting gets going. Once Emily started talking and we were doing the interview, we turned everyone's mics off except for Emily's, myself, and Jessica. Uh, and then when she finished with her story and we had a kind of our question and answer session, I opened all the mics back up for our participants to be able to talk with Emily. And you'd think 100 people would be nuts. Mm -mm. It was beautiful. Everybody took a turn if someone started talking. If someone else had, they would sit back and let that person answer the question. Nobody talked over each other. Once the question and answer with session was over, we left the mic on. Uh, we were originally gonna do it for an hour. I let it stay open for two. We stitched, we talked, we fellowshiped. Um, and it was 
a very enjoyable evening. And for the most part, we got some beautiful, beautiful feedback. And thank you to all of those who did reach out um, and send us such encouraging uh, words about our first Zoom call. Next month, February 19th, will be Chantel with uh, 141 Designs. And she is going to be uh, giving us finishing ideas for our pieces. And it will follow the same format. Again, 100 people. Uh, I've already had some people say if we record it, they will step aside for new people. And y'all, that's just the sweetest thing in the world. So we are trying to work with Zoom and figure out how we can just record Chantel's portion of it. Um, I don't want to record all of our stitchers. Some people are not comfortable with that. And I want to respect everybody's right to privacy and to be comfortable because for the most part, everybody had their cameras on. So we will figure out how to record Chantel's portion of it so that we can show it on the page. Um, and I again stress that you need to be a member of our Facebook group. It is SYS 2023, open to everyone. So please come over. I also want to... Um, state that I have a Facebook group, the dot fanciful flamingo, and I just go on there and kind of share my plans as well. And uh, it's more my personal group. Jessica also has her Facebook group, the Sweetwater Stitcher. Um, you know, for for people who love to follow her as well. So those are three groups. There's tons of groups on Facebook for for stitching and for you to be part of the community, and for you to never be alone. So those are places where you can go for some community. The Camping Stitcher, Chris, has started her Facebook group, The Camping Stitcher. So you can also join her group as well. So you're never alone. You are never alone. Do not feel like you have to be alone. I think that's going to be my mantra this year because I just don't want lonely people. I was an only child um, and I know what it's like to feel lonely and to play solitaire and read and so because um, just, there was no one around. So, small chit chat this week, but I kind of feel like it's been a long one. Um, last week, my giveaway was the chart Stitch More Frog Less. And the word was Rip It or Ribbit. And Fairlight Jordan. Fairlight, F-A-Y-R-E, Light, Jordan. You are the winner of this pattern. So if you will email me at one, the number one, fancifulflamingo at gmail.com. Uh, please be over 18. I'd love it if you were a subscriber, but you don't have to be. Um, and give me your address. I'll get this out in the mail to you. And then this week's giveaway is going to be the March Trucking Along from Stitching with the Housewives. And I would like you to use trucking along in your comments. You guys are so creative with your comments when I give you these little catchphrases and it just makes me smile. My giveaways are open uh, for one week. So trucking along will be um, this week's. And then I pull a winner and then next week we'll go on to someone else. There has been unfortunately a lot of ugly scamming going on on uh, YouTube, and I know a lot of people have been affected by it, so um, I'm going to keep the giveaways going because I like to give back as long as I can, but um, the scamming is an issue. The scamming is an issue, and it's part of why we ask you not to put giveaway, gift, prize, anything like that in your comments, so we don't give these scammers that search for keywords, um, the opportunity to do this. So with all of that being said, and I'm sure this is an uber long video, I am at the end now of my videos going to also list any shops that I frequent purchase recommend. I like to give back that way to the community as well. I love to shop small when I can, but I also love the big box. I love Fat Quarter Shop. I love One Two Three Stitch. Um, but when I can, I like to give back to uh, the small shops. I've been a small little business owner myself. 
I know what that means to my family. We are a one income family. So that extra income definitely helped me pay for extras for my children. Uh, sometimes it helped me pay for a meal out for my family or save up for a purchase that we needed. So when you do shop small, it's not Amazon. It doesn't come the next day. I don't need most things the next day. But as I showed you this week, almost every, well, not almost, every single thing I ordered, Lady Doc creates too. Not even a week. In a matter of days, everything came in. So, have a fabulous weekend. I will see you in February. I can't believe this. It's already the end of January. Um, <clears throat> and God bless you all. Bye.